Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the honeycomb beanie, which you can see here in the photo in front of you. I also have my sample one here, uh, and I'm showing it here without the pom-pom so you can see what the top looks like, but this hat works great uh, with a pom-pom or without. This is a fairly straightforward beanie to work once you get the hang of the honeycomb smock stitch. It's super, super cozy and has this fabulous texture within it. Now I'll show you how I worked the top, but again, uh, the beanie is fairly straightforward once you get the hang of the stitch and it's quite easy to close the top. You're going to love it. So for this pattern today, I am using a five millimeter crochet hook as well as one ball of the Color Theory wand yarn by Two of Wands and Lion Brand. I'm using the color Bee Pollen today and there's about 246 yards per ball of yarn. So you're going to need one of these. It's a worsted weight yarn. I find it's a little bit on the lighter side if you're looking for something to substitute it with. So thank you so much for joining me. A direct link to the free written pattern which is on richtexturescrochet.com can be found in the description of this video along with links to both of the uh, crochet hook and the yarn as well. So thank you again for joining me and don't forget to subscribe. Take a look around. This channel has uh, many free crochet beanie patterns on it as well as uh, other designs and free crochet stitch tutorials. Now our hat today is worked from the brim up. So we're going to start by working the brim of our hat and the brim of our hat is worked in rows. You're going to start by making a slip knot and then by working a foundation chain and your foundation chain needs to be a multiple of third, uh, can be any multiple of stitches and it, today we're going to chain 13. You are welcome to make your brim longer or shorter depending on your personal preference. Thirteen. Once you have your foundation chain, 13 stitches worked, you're going to begin by working a slip stitch into the second chain from your hook. So there's one, two, into that second chain and I like to work into the back bumps of my stitches. You're going to slip stitch in the second stitch and then in each stitch all the way across. If you are not a fan of slip stitches, you may substitute these stitches for single crochet or half double crochet. It's up to you. Once you come all the way across, you'll have a total of 12 slip stitches. You're going to chain one and turn your work. We're now going to continue working slip stitches or single crochet or half double crochet if you choose and we're going to be working in the back loop only of each stitch all the way across. So when you're looking at the top of your stitch you have a loop that's the closest to you, that's your front loop, and the one that's furthest away is your back loop. So starting in that first stitch, working in the back loop only, you're going to slip stitch in the first stitch and then slip stitch in each of the back loops all the way across. When you come to the end of this row, you're going to chain one, turn your work and repeat. You're going to repeat row two until your work from the beginning measures approximately 16 to 17 inches. So go ahead, repeat row two, slip stitch in each stitch all the way across, working in this back loop only, chain one, turn, repeat until your work from the beginning measures 16 to 17 inches. And that's not stretched. When you stretch it, it should uh, fit comfortably between 20 and 22 inches for circumference an adult head. Chain one, 
return and repeat. Once you have worked your 16 to 17 inches of stitches in the back loops only, this is what you have when it is not stretched out and you can see it has quite a bit of stretch to it. What you're going to do is you're going to take your brim and you're going to fold it over so that the two short ends meet. Make sure that it's not twisted. And you're going to do a slip stitch seam all the way across. So what I like to do is insert my hook in the back loop only of that first uh, piece and then over on the other side also in the back loop only of the other side working through both thicknesses and just slip stitch and then continue that all the way across you want to make sure that you're not skipping any stitches or working in any stitches twice you just want a nice even seam all the way across the two short ends about halfway there so once you come all the way across You're then going to turn your brim, so just flip it so that it is right side out. You want that seam to be on the inside. We're then going to start working the body of our hat, and the body of our hat is worked in rounds. Our first round is worked just around this rough edge of our brim. You're going to start by chaining one, and then you're going to evenly work 74 single crochet stitches all the way around. If you're changing the size of your beanie, I mentioned earlier this is for the size of an adult head. If you're changing the size, you'll just want to make sure that you have an even number of stitches. So work 74 stitches all the way around. If it helps, you can place a stitch marker about halfway around and then work half your stitches on one side, half on the other. Uh, it's up to you. I'm just inserting my hook anywhere uh, kind of near the top of the brim and uh, just trying to space them out evenly. So 74 stitches all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, you're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. Once you come all the way around and have 74 single crochet, you're going to join with a slip stitch in your first stitch and chain one. You are now going to turn your work. You won't always turn at the end of each round, but this one you do. You're then going to work a single crochet into your first stitch and single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Once again, you'll have 74 single crochet stitches and you'll join with a slip stitch uh, in the top of the first stitch. At the end of row two, you're going to join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. You're then going to chain one and turn your work. 
For row three, we're going to begin by working a single crochet into our first stitch. You're then going to work a long double crochet. To work your long double crochet, you're going to work over top of the next stitch and into the, uh, the space under the stitch two rows below. So I have my next stitch and then there's one under it and you're going to insert your hook under that stitch two rows below. So bring your hook in front, one row, two rows under that next stitch, two rows below, yarn over, draw up a loop and bring it up to the height of your single crochet, yarn over and pull through. You're then going to single crochet into the next stitch and work a long double crochet once again into the space under the next stitch two rows below working over top of your next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Single crochet into your next stitch and long single crochet into the space under the next stitch two rows below. Single crochet in the next stitch and long single crochet over the next. Repeat that all the way around and you're going to join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. You'll be ending with a long single crochet. At the end of round three, you've ended with a long single crochet. You're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Chain one and do not turn your work. You want to keep your front side facing. We're going to begin round four by working a front post single crochet around the posts of the previous long single crochet and the next long single crochet. However, we're not working around the entire post, we're only working around one leg of it, if you will, one half of the post. So you have these two long strands coming down, you're just going to hook by inserting your hook around the post, bringing your hook in front and working it around the post half of the post of that previous stitch and then pick up the half of the post of the next stitch, the next long single crochet, yarn over, draw up your loop and yarn over and pull through two. You're then going to single crochet into your next stitch. We're going to repeat that all the way around. Front post single crochet around half of the post of each of the next two long single crochet stitches. Yarn over, draw up your loop, yarn over and pull through two. And then single crochet into your next stitch. So repeat that all the way around front post single crochet single crochet in the next stitch and then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch At the end of round four, you're going to join with a slip stitch in your first stitch. You'll have finished off with a single crochet. Chain one and turn your work. Now for the rest of the pattern, it is essentially a repeat. You're going to be repeating uh, rounds three and four until your work from the beginning measures approximately nine inches. So your round three began with a single crochet into the first stitch, followed by a long single crochet 
over the next stitch. When you are working this long single crochet, you want to make sure that you bring your hook down and that your hook is coming out in between the two legs of your last um, single crochet two together. So I don't know how well you can see it there, but you can see where my hook is coming out through just under the peak there of your single crochet two together and then yarn over, pull it up and complete the stitch. Single crochet in the next stitch and then once again insert your hook under the stitch two rows below under the single crochet and make sure it's coming up in between those two uh, legs or strands of your front post single crochet. So you're going to repeat that all the way around then at the end of this round uh, you will turn your work and then repeat round four. So single crochet, long single crochet, all the way around. Do, uh, continue to repeat rounds three and four until your work from the beginning measures the nine inches and that's measuring from the bottom of your brim up and then meet me back here. Now once you have worked your repeats, rounds three and four, turning at the end of each round until your work from the beginning measures approximately nine inches, this is, and I'll pull it back here just a little bit, this is what your beanie is going to look like. You're going to join with a slip stitch into that first stitch and you're going to fasten off and when you fasten off you're going to leave a long tail. I recommend about 15 to 20 inches. You want it to be fairly long. You're then going to take your yarn needle, thread the long tail through, and you're going to weave in and out through the tops of your stitches all the way around your beanie. So weave in and out just through the tops of your stitches all the way around and you're going to um, very carefully as you work pull it tight okay so I'm just going to continue weaving my needle in and out through the tops of my stitches pulling my thread through just like so all the way around the top of your beanie. Now I'm working under the loops like where you would insert your crochet hook trying not to work through the strand of yarn just because it does make it a little bit easier with less resistance when you pull the top of your hat closed as I'm going to show you. So I'm just inserting my hook where I would normally insert my crochet hook. All the way around the top of your hat. I should have mentioned earlier also if you're changing the size of your beanie if you make that nine inches a little bit longer you're going your hat is going to have a little bit more of a slouch of course if you make it shorter it won't be quite as slouchy and be more snug fitting so really work it to the height that you desire I am almost all the way around here So once you come all the way around, you're then going to very carefully take your yarn and pull the top of the hat closed. Just very carefully. You want to pull that opening as tight as you can 
but again you don't want to pull too hard because you don't want to accidentally break your thread so you're just going to pull it very carefully until it is fairly uh, tight my opening still measures about an inch and a half you're then going to take the yarn and push it through that larger opening just to the inside of your hat you want to turn your hat inside out if you need to pull it closed once again you can do so just to close that top a little bit more you're then going to take your yarn needle and you're just simply going to sew the top of the hat closed so sew that smaller opening just like so all the way across and we're just doing this on the inside so that if there is a little bit of the seam it will be hidden on the inside of your hat so all the way across when you come across the opening I do recommend securing it I just work a little bit of a knot you don't want it to be op uh, to open it open while you're wearing it so just secure your thread with a knot and then tuck in your end and fasten off you can then turn your beanie right side out the top of your beanie like so and if you wish you can add a pom-pom to the top or you can leave it without it's really up to you and that's all there is to work the honeycomb beanie so thank you so much for joining me once again i invite you to subscribe enjoy your new beanie and if you uh, happen to photograph it and share it on social media be feel free to tag ridge textures crochet because i'd love to come and admire it so thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.